Hello and welcome to part two of Super Data Science's Sunburst Chart Tutorial. If you haven't been through part one, I'd highly recommend going back and walking through that as we walk through data preparation both inside of Excel to transform your data so it's properly formatted for the Sunburst Chart. We also work with data preparation inside of Excel so you can duplicate it properly and get things set up for our data densification that we're going to need to do. But building off of those, assuming you've already done those, let's dive into building out our Sunburst Chart. Coming back to our data, the first step that we're going to need to do is our data densification. Data densification uses this column to pad, and you start out by creating bins. We'll call it padded. Again, data densification is often called padding your data. Now we have to look at what this is doing in order to properly understand it. If you look at to pad, we have two values from our data set. We have one and we have 203. So we have the 50 rows for one and the 50 rows for 203. But if we drag padded out, we actually have the values one, 2, 3, 4, etc., all the way through 203. This happens because the bin function is what's called range aware. When you create bins, it finds the minimum value of 1, finds the maximum value of 203, but then when you tell it to create a bin of size 1, Tableau's engine goes in and effectively creates a blank bin for every single value in between your max and your min. So what we've done is inside of Tableau's engine said, hey, we want all of these values in there even though they don't exist in our data set. The cool thing about this is then you can use table calculations. Let's use index, the one of the most basic and common table calculations, just returns the current row of the partition. You bring index up to your column, and you notice we have two values, 203 and 1. But then if you compute using padded, the table calculation will actually comprehend what's going on inside of that densification and return a value for each of those bins. What you can then do is combine this with other more advanced calculations, especially table calculations, to draw marks on those values even though they didn't exist in your data set. This is the essence of data densification and data padding, and now that you've done that, you're ready to go. Okay, now that we've checked that our data densification is working and we've cleared our view, we're ready to build out the calculations required to build our sunburst chart. At this point, again, give credit where credit's due. Bohr Beren is the man who came up with these calculations. He's the one who built out the advanced table calculations, used the data densification, and used the advanced trigonometry that, frankly, is way beyond me in order to create this. And so we owe him a lot of credit. To that point, we're actually going to come in and just use the calculations that exist in our practice workbook. And we'll copy those right there. And we'll come in and we'll paste them. This will save me a lot of typing, save you guys a lot of boring watching me type. And I'll actually go through and describe these, and then we'll show you how to build it, and especially build out the nested table calculations. First off, we already have our index calculation that we did before. Just shows the current row of the partition, allows us to comprehend the data densification that's happening. Max level is a window calculation that returns what level you're on. So if you look at our chart, this is level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4. And by wrapping it inside of a table calculation, it will comprehend the data densification that's going on and be able to calculate it correctly for every view. Max sales is the exact same thing as max level, except it returns your sales value. So you'll be able to get a proper sales value for every one of the marks that you're drawing. Slice level, right here, again, returns the max level, but we keep it separate just in terms of readability in terms of our calculations. Slice size looks and creates a percent of total calculation across this view. So you have your four regions for your level, in this first level, and it creates a percent of total based off of sales, so it can figure out how to exactly divide this view. Then looking at your edges right here, I skipped this intentionally, it uses some lookup functions to look at the previous max levels that you were on and the slice sizes you were on to figure out where to draw these edges in between your views. So you have your sizes, but you also need to be able to comprehend where those edges are to where you can start splitting up your different dimensions. And then here's the kicker. When you're drawing points in Tableau, you can think of it as drawing it on a Cartesian coordinate. So you have your x-axis horizontally, you have your y-axis vertically. These two calculations, x and y, together will create a point or an address where Tableau will then come in and draw the marks. So I'm going to just open this and let you look at that for a little bit. And we can all sit back and thank Borberen for the amazing work that he's done. This is a parametric equation. You can tell that it is because it's using cosine, it's using pi, and it's using the table calculations that we had in order to comprehend things. Basically, I'm not going to try and explain all of this because it's honestly beyond me, and we owe him a big thanks. But what it does, in effect, 
is it draws this circle that we want along the different edges. So this creates the x coordinate that we need. And then this calculation creates the y coordinate that we need. So again, y, if you're familiar with parametric equations, uses sine and pi. x uses cosine and pi. But that's about the extent of my knowledge on those parametric equations. At this point, I've clicked through all of our calculations that we're going to use. I would recommend, as you're building this chart out yourself, either going to Bora Brand's blog, you can just borabrand.wordpress.com, and looking up radial tree maps, or you can pause the video as I was going through and then write out the calculation based off of that. Whatever works best for you. Now that we have our calculations set, we're going to come in and we're going to actually build our view. This is very exciting. First, we're going to add in the dimensions that we care about. We want our region, our segment, our product category, and then our brand. Remember this order because it's going to be the order from the inside to the outside, and it's going to be very important for our table calculations. So region, segment, product category, and brand. Then we're going to take our x value, drag it up. We're going to take our y value, drag it up. And you're going to see we have a lot of nulls and something starting to show up. We're also going to need to bring in our padded, and we're going to need to bring in what level we're on. And then most importantly, we're going to need to bring in the polygon chart. And then we'll drag pad it up to our path. So what the polygon chart does is it's going to take this x and this y and then draw a mark on the coordinates for where x and y are. It's very important to use that, and it's really the crux of this technique. So now that we have our view set up, we actually come here and edit our table calculation. And now we're going to use nested table calculations. Nested table calculations are an advanced technique where you recalculate the table calculation at different levels based off of the other calculations that make up your table calculation. So we have x index slice level edges max level slice size and max sales. We're going to go through and tell it exactly where to calculate. So remember I said that order was important. We want region, segment, product category, brand, and then we have level and padded. For x, we need it to comprehend everything that's going on. For index, just like in our example, we only needed to comprehend padded so it can find all the values in our view. For slice level, we're going to need to do region, segment, product category, brand. And then because it's trying to figure out level, we don't want it to include level or else it'll be a bit of a circular calculation. For edges, we're going to say region, segment, product category, and brand. And then we also want it to calculate what level it's on. So it can know properly when to end level here or here, depending on which one you're using. For max level, that one we just wanted to comprehend the padding, so it'll give us the proper level for each of our marks. Slice size, we want it to calculate according to everything that we have. So region, segment, product, brand, level, and padded. And then for max sales, again, we just want it to be available based off of all of our padded values. Now that x is taken care of, we're going to go in and do the exact same thing for y. So for our y value, we want it to have everything that's in our view. So we have region, segment, product category, brand, level, and padded. Index, we want it to show padded. Slice level, again. I told you to remember this, and you're probably getting tired of seeing it, but we have region, segment, product category, brand. And then we're going to skip the level and do padded. For edges, we're going to go in, region, segment, product category, brand, and level. Max level, we just need padded. Slice size, we need everything. And then for max sales, we're going to need it across padded. And there you go. This is incredibly exciting. Now we have our chart showing up. So we're going to format this really quick. We're just going to get us a nice white blank canvas to work on. Very modern look in terms of design. Then we're also going to hide our headers. Now at this point, you're going to jump back in really quick to X. And just show you this is where our technique differs a little bit from Bora Baran's. Bohr's technique, while really advanced and really helpful, didn't allow you to use Tableau's built-in coloring. You had to go in and manually color things yourself. 
So for ours, we added in the additional dimensions right here, and then we had to address those inside of our table calculations. But when we did that, we actually could come in and rather than be these being on detail, we can change them to color. And then you can do the multiple color technique to keep adding them in. And then you get this nice color gradient across your four different dimensions that were really helpful. This makes it so that we have to have all four of them inside of our table calculations and makes for a bit more clicking and a memorizing of a silly pattern region segment product category brand. When you're applying this to your own charts, make sure that you have the kind of steps down your dimensions that you want to have happen, your different levels from region, segment, product, category, brand, or whatever your four are. And you comprehend that because you're going to have to manually code those into your table calculations. This doesn't make it more prone to break as well. So it's not necessarily the best fix in the world, but for us it was worth it so we could get that coloring that we really like. At this point, our chart is coming together really nicely. You can see it on your view right now. We've got our four regions, and then we also have our segments, our product categories, and our brands underneath that. Coming in, we're going to do a couple more cosmetic changes, M make our tooltip a little bit nicer, add in some borders, and then add things to a dashboard so your chart will be a bit more readable for your users, and hopefully will be a better experience for them. Coming in, the next step we're going to do is add in that border that we were talking about. You can either make it a dark border or a light border. For the more modern theme, we'll stick with the lighter color. And then coming into our tooltip at the moment, you can see that we have a whole bunch of information, everything that's in our view, and some that we honestly don't need. For instance, padded is useful for us as we build the chart, but not for the end user. And the X and Y coordinates, while interesting, are not what's needed as well. So we're going to come into our tooltip, remove those fields that we don't need. We're also going to get rid of level, as that one's kind of visually self-explanatory. Then we'll come up, region and segment, we'll put these in, and then we'll move product category, keeping with our favorite pattern of four dimensions that we have beaten into the ground and into our memories by now. So now as you hover over, you'll see that we have our region, we have the product, the segment, then we have the product category, then the brand. Now there's arguments that you could do this different ways. You could have it just show exactly what the region is, or the segment is, or the product category. For me, I like seeing the steps going down the view, being able to see exactly where your chart is coming from or what each individual mark means. This is just kind of a personal preference. You're welcome to do whatever you'd like with that. Now that we have our tool tape ready and we've added in our borders, we're ready to rename this. We have our sunburst chart. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a value that shows the actual individual sales. So we'll come here and we'll add max sales to text. We'll make this an entire view. Then we'll come up here and we'll add a little bit of a label. I just double clicked in there. Then we'll call this sales. Do that. What we have right here is just a simple text field, but it actually is a shortcut for creating your own header. So we come down and we hide the field label for that. Come in and format this. Since it's going to show up on a dashboard, we know we need to make it a little bit bigger. 20 is probably good. Make it bold. And then for sales, we'll want to format that as well. And we'll make it currency. Data set was in USD. And then we'll drop the decimal points because we don't need them. Now that we have that, we'll call this our sales label. We can create our dashboard. For this one, you can use whatever size you use. Web page embedded tends to look best but we'll bring out our sunburst chart. We'll get rid of the legend because we don't need that at the moment. And then what we'll do is for sales label, rather than bring it in as tiled, we'll bring it in as a floating and drag it to the center of our chart. We'll hide the title. Then we'll resize it just a little bit. Now that we finished sizing, we have our sunburst chart, we have our sales ready, but I also wanna come in and add a legend. So looking at our sunburst chart, we do have a legend, but it's a little bit clunky. You've got every single value, every single combination. It's too long to be able to see in one go, and you have a lot of null values. So it'd be nice if we create a legend that just shows the region, because those are kind of the dominant colors in our view. So if we come here, we'll call this legend. If we bring region out to color, drag that up to rows, we now have what looks like a legend. We can come in, we'll notice that north is orange, south is green, East is blue, west is yellow. We can then come in, say north is orange, south is green, east is blue, west is yellow. This is just matching what we had. And then we'll reorder this 
kind of a best practice to go along what people expect. So north, south, east, west is a usual way in English to describe the cardinal directions. So we have those for our legend. We can now bring our legend in as a floating object. We'll hide the title, hide the redundant legend from our legend sheet. And then we can shrink this, bring it down here in our corner. And we now have a great little legend that explains the view that's going on. Now as a final touch, we'll want to come into our dashboard right here and add an action. We're going to add a filter action, call this our sales filter, because we wanted to apply from our sunburst chart and only go down to our sales. We're going to make it act on a hover. I'm going to change this to exclude all values. And then we'll want it to filter according to the dimensions that are in our sunburst chart. So for the last time, we have region, segment, product category, and brand. Once we have that built, we can now hover over each individual mark, and the sales will adjust to show us what we need. So now we have our west region. We can tell that there was 108,000 in sales. We have our south region for grocery and the vegetable sales. There was 22,000 in sales, and so on and so forth. The reason we went into our actions right here and we chose exclude rather than show all values is because unfortunately the window max function doesn't quite comprehend everything like we need it to. The window max function in fact will return this 115,000 for the maximum region rather than the entire sum of the data set. So if anybody watching this can figure out a way to fix that, we'd love that and we'd appreciate seeing it in the comments below. But at this point, we now have our sunburst dashboard. We can come in and we can edit this as our sunburst sales dashboard. And you now have the full functionality to come in. You have your regions, north, south, east, and west. You have the descending dimensions that we're looking for. And you have the individual sales values that show up as your customers interact with their data. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you were able to follow all the steps. This is definitely a very advanced chart type, so well done keeping up and moving along with this. Feel free to send us feedback on superdatascience.com, and we'll see you on our next tutorial series. Thank you.